It's Wichels that we start, in fact, because he translated <laughs> this quote from Antoine Griezmann's <laughs> former agent, Eric Olad's coming out and saying he joined a club in big trouble where Messi had an opinion on everything. He is both an emperor and a monarch, and he didn't see Antoine's arrival with a favourable eye. His attitude was deplorable, and he made him feel it. I always heard Antoine saying he had no problems with Messi, but never the other way around. It's a regime of fear. Either you are with him or you're against him. He is as good on the pitch as he is bad off it. Wow. Quite strong stuff then. Uh, Jules, this is authentic. This is real. Yeah, it is really. It's an interview in France Football. They did a, a long piece on, on Griezmann and the struggle that he's had at Barcelona and, and what he should do or what he could do to make things better. So they had a lot of people invited to talk. Emmanuel Petit, for example, who himself was a Barcelona player in the past, struggled to adapt there, struggled to be adopted by the dressing room, a bit like what Griezmann is going through. You had plenty of other people and you had... Eric Collas, who obviously played a huge part in, in Griezmann's career, not so much anymore, they're not that close anymore, who, as you said, has strong words about Messi. The only thing I struggle about that is that we almost 18 months since Griezmann has arrived. I think we, we can see now that things are a bit different than when he arrived and his relationship with Messi looks certainly better now than he was 18 months ago. And I think it's no secret for anyone that at the beginning there was not much of a relationship between Griezmann and Messi anyway. I think Messi is a, is a very different kind of teammate that you can have because he's just so good and such a genius that I think it takes a bit of time for anyone you know, to, to get used to playing with him, for him to get used to you maybe for him to adopt you in that dressing room to sort of welcome you and things like that. I just think that 18 months on, I'm not sure what Eric Collard said is still, is still off of date now. I think maybe that was the case 18 months ago, not so much now. It's quite something in it, Ali. It is. But on the surface, I think what you got to realize is that when you walk into a locker room, there is something to prove, regardless of who you are and what you have accomplished in your career. When you're taking a step up in your professional life, whatever that may be, well, those people that are already there, including Lionel Messi, will sit back and say, okay, well, let me see if this guy's got the goods. Now, Anton Griezmann, I imagine that he must have walked into the locker room and thought to himself, well, I've done so well for Atletico Madrid. They know me. I'm a World Cup winner. I this, that, and the other. But that doesn't really matter when you go to Barcelona. They're not thinking about what you did with France. They're not thinking about what you did with Atletico Madrid. They're wanting to know what you're going to do for Barcelona at this time. And I think what happens is that Antoine Griezmann walked in expecting that everybody's going to be welcoming, that Messi's going to be welcoming, that he's going to get off his chair and give him a hug, and Messi probably said, so, and that's it. That's it. And he's expecting something that wasn't happening. Now, we've never uh, said about Lionel Messi that he's got the most sort of dynamic personality there is. And so whatever Antoine Griezmann may have been expecting of Lionel Messi, and Messi just kind of gave him the, uh-huh, what's up, what's going on? I'm just waiting for, to see if this guy can deliver, if this guy can be trusted. And to the point of him not passing the ball to Antoine Griezmann or denying Antoine Griezmann the ball because he chose to go with Luis Suarez, well, it's only natural. Because you trust Luis Suarez, because you've seen what Luis Suarez can do for you. And so if you have two choices right next to you, and you're Lionel Messi, and Griezmann may be in a better position, but you know, you know what Luis Suarez has done and can do for you, well, yes, I'm going to give him the chance to do so. That's, that happens in every sport and with every sort of uh, discipline in terms of what you do in the attacking half. If you're in a basketball court, Okay, and you're the point guard, and you keep giving the ball to a guy, and that guy keeps missing, are you going to give him the ball again? No, you're going to go to the guy who you know can make the shot. It happens in every sport, and it's a dynamic in the nature of team sports. Don, do you agree with Ali? I don't really agree with anyone, really, because I don't really, I don't really understand how we're taking the word of a former agent on Lionel Messi when I've never, ever heard any player that's been inside of a dressing room with Argentina or Barcelona say these some sort of words. I mean, I've listened to people like Paul Pogba's agent, Yaya Torre, Torre's agent in the past, you know, moaning that he didn't get a birthday cake. Why on earth are we giving this guy airtime? I mean, it might be real in terms of what he's saying, but is it the truth? I don't think it is. Let's, in, let's, let's go with it, though, Don. And what intrigues me from someone who hasn't obviously been in a locker room 
but obviously in business, you want to make everybody happy and everyone on the same page, as opposed to somebody coming in and going, right, you've got to prove yourself. Because if I want to win, if I'm Lionel Messi and I want to go on and win the Champions League, I need to get the best out of Anton Griezmann. And if I'm going to get the best out of him, surely I have to nurture that and befriend him and help him as opposed to the opposite. Yeah, but I don't, I, I, I don't see that in Lionel Messi's character. I don't see in Lionel Messi watching the boys that are arriving at Barca and thinking they're a threat to his position. I think I see a Lionel Messi who wants Antran Griezmann to do well and wants Neymar to do well and wants Luis Suarez to do well because that helps him. That helps him score goals. That helps him win trophies. I don't know why... Listen, I could be completely wrong because I'm not part of that dressing room. I'm not privy to the conversations or the lack of... But it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it wouldn't do Messi any good trying to pick an early fight with Antoine Griezmann. It doesn't. It doesn't wash with me. It doesn't really sit well with me. I, I can't imagine that happening for a, in a million years. But Jules, we've heard the power. We heard Kike Setien talking about the power that Lionel Messi has within that Barcelona locker room. Yes, that's right. Kike Setien being the, the latest one really to talk about how difficult he found at times to. Uh, manage Leo Messi because, as we said, he's so different. He's so good because he's so he's so different because he's so good as well. And I, I can see I can see Don's point of view as well. I, I can tell you that we know uh, that it was difficult at the beginning between Messi and and Griezmann. I think even between Suarez and, and Griezmann. And I agree with Ali that maybe Griezmann thought it was going to be easy to walk into that dressing room, and he wasn't. And he wasn't. And he had to prove himself. He had to be accepted, especially by the leaders of that of that dressing room and of that squad, which I think took took a long time. He's getting better now, for sure, and you can see it. And maybe the fact that Luis Suarez left the club has helped Griezmann in a way, but it was certainly not easy at the beginning. Would it have been better if uh, Messi left in the summer? I think so to some degree. I, I, really, know, really. In, in, I, I think so to some degree in that I right now I look at Ronald Koeman, right, and he must have thought Lionel Messi was out the door. And so... Now he had this plan as to what he wanted to do. Messi now comes back, and you know he's going to play. So all those plans that you had as a coach, you now have to say, well, that's great in theory, but now we have this guy who you know has to be on the field. And so all this other thing about depending on the youth and the transition into younger players and Antoine Griezmann playing in his position, all those things sort of have to kind of take a step back and say, no, no, it's still Lionel Messi's team. And right now Barcelona is in that sort of uncomfortable position of just kind of, Lionel Messi is still here. He's great for us, has been great for us. And if we're going to do anything important, it's going to depend on him to do that great things for us. And yet we can't quite transition forward to the life after Lionel Messi just yet. They're stuck in between. And you see it in the way they play. Uh, you see the, the, sometimes how there is certain freedom for some of the younger players and then not so much for other players. And that all depends on what Lionel Messi dictates on the field. So you saw the version of Barcelona in the first half against Betis where Antoine Griezmann actually played pretty well, created chances, missed the chances, missed a penalty, but was active, far more dynamic than he has been any time earlier this year. Now Messi comes on the field and you say, well, what kind of difference does he make? Well, essentially the first place he get involved he is the dummy run in which Anton Griezmann ends up scoring. So it's that difficulty of finding that balance of how do we get the best of Messi and the best of everybody around him? That's the part that nobody has been able to figure out over the last couple of seasons. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.